want to start off by saying thank you to everyone who is excited for the Halloween animatic. I was too, but it really ended up being a much larger undertaking than I was ready for, and sadly I didn't have nearly enough time to finish it before Halloween came around. So to those still excited to see it, don't worry, it will still come out. Eventually. The truth is, at the time of recording this, I only have about a third of the posing drawn out. One third planned out, and the last third isn't even storyboarded yet. And I haven't even gotten to the part of actually drawing the frames themselves. So you can see why I was getting so stressed about finishing in time, hence my doing this speed paint instead. On that note, let's get started. At this point in the video, you'll probably notice that one of these things is not like the others. So I'll start with that. Ladybugs. Yes, I am afraid of ladybugs, I fully expect to get flamed for this, but trust me when I say that this fear is justified in my case. When I was a kid, probably not even double digits or just barely double digits, we were living with my grandparents for a while. Now my grandma had a huge backyard and a garden that we all loved, but one summer it got overrun by aphids. You know, those little green bugs that eat every plant in sight? Yeah, those things. So my grandma and I, wanting to defend her hard work, we both went to the store and bought one of those things of like a thousand ladybugs since aphids happen to be one of their favorite snacks. And I know it was a thousand because it is forever etched into my brain at this point and you'll soon know why. Now, my grandma is known as the ladybug lady by basically our whole family and several family friends because it's basically her mascot. Almost half of what she owns is themed after ladybugs, if not more. So, as a small bean of a person, I was excited to see the fantasy-esque scene of my grandma standing in her garden on a clear summer day with ladybugs flying all through the air. <laughs> no, that, that's not what happened in the slightest. Instead of the ladybugs flying away to the plants to enjoy their green buggy feast, everyone, and I mean every single one, flew to the ground at my feet and started to crawl up my legs, and keep in mind I was wearing shorts, this is on my bare legs. Uh, so I proceeded to do what any sane child would have, and just screamed at the top of my lungs and ran my little legs into the house, slamming the slider door behind me. And I didn't go into the garden for about the next two days. <laughs> Now, this fear luckily isn't a severe one in that I can't even be near ladybugs, but it's more so I can only handle one at a time. If there's only one, it can crawl around my hand to its heart's content and I'll actually kind of enjoy it, but the moment a second one shows up, I'll have war flashbacks and my stomach will get a little queasy. So to keep on the track of bug horror stories, let's tackle the earwigs next. Once again, this story involves a garden, but this time it was ours. Back before we moved and had to live with my grandparents for a while, my family lived in Oregon. Keep all of being weird, guys. And we grew sunflowers in our backyard. One year, they grew so tall that they literally met up with the same height as our roof, so our parents decided to cut them down before the wind made them timber like a tree and kill one of their children. The seed faces of the flowers alone were as big as my face, so I immediately volunteered to be one of the people to smack them against the deck to get the seeds out, along with my younger brother. So here we are, sitting in the slider door next to each other, giant flower heads in hand. One, two, three, we smack them against the deck at the same time. Cue a large amount of seeds coming out, as well as a stupid amount of earwigs, all falling right at our bare little feet. At this point, you can basically just reimagine the ladybug slider door scene, but this time with earwigs, and my brother was there. <laughs> to this day, both my brother and I get so uncomfortable if we see an earwig. We won't care if it's outside, in nature, minding its own business. We see it, the thing is dead. That's just... that's it. It's dead. Like, to be perfectly honest, I'm... Literally shaking a little right now, just having to recount the story because it just makes my skin just crawl. And I'm pretty sure this story might also be the reason why I really don't like sunflower seeds, simply because it's forever linked to that experience. Now, last on the buggy train is spiders. Let me start off by saying two things. One, I do not hate spiders. I actually think they can be really cool sometimes. 
My only rules with spiders are as long as it doesn't invade my space, like my room, my things, or my personal bubble, and it's not dangerous to me, my family, or my dog, like a black widow, it can live. It can hang out in the corner of the ceiling and watch TV with me for all I care. But if its web starts to encroach onto anything, I'm sorry buddy, but you broke the contract. You need to leave. Now two, this story didn't cause a fear out of an interaction with spiders, but rather the lack of a very particular interaction. Once again, this is child Marissa living in Oregon. In the room I shared with my older sister and my younger brother at the time, there was a distinct spider's nest in the corner directly above the bed that I shared with my sister. Despite both of us being very nervous about it, my parents, for some reason, opted not to do anything about it and just left it there. Now, anyone who knows pretty much anything will know that a spider's egg sac will have a lot of babies in there. It can be a hundred, it can be a thousand, but the point is, it'll be a lot. So. We wake up one morning, and the egg sac has hatched. That's it. No spiders anywhere to be seen. It hatched, and we didn't see a single spider. But also, we didn't see a single spider. We had no idea where those things went, or when they might decide to suddenly pop in and say hello all at once. So rather than one single experience of terror, it was several prolonged months of utter paranoia. Next fear up is lightning. Yes, I know I should probably hit clowns and dolls first, but there's a reason I'm saving those two for last. The reason I'm afraid of lightning is actually a pretty practical one. One summer, during a lightning storm, a power line got knocked over on the hill behind my house. I don't know if it was the wind that knocked it over or an actual bolt of lightning, but whatever it was resulted in the hill catching on fire. Now, the hill behind me is full of dry brush, so you can imagine how quickly the fire began to spread. We were lucky enough that we have a fire station just down the street, but this was a storm with a lot of wind and no rain, so they weren't at the best odds. You could see the glow of the fire over our fence just by standing in the backyard, and you could see the top bits of the fire itself if you looked out the window of my parents' bedroom upstairs. My dad even at one point took the hose and started wetting the dirt of the hill behind our fence and our neighbors, just in case the fire got to the house line just to try and slow it down. Now, my parents say this next part didn't happen, but I distinctly remember a point where my aunt and cousins drove over to help us pack up some of our belongings just in case we needed to evacuate the house. Needless to say, I was really scared. We probably had at least three to five fire trucks on the hill, if not more, when it finally started raining. After another couple of hours, the fire was successfully put out and everything was fine and the singed parts of the hill even somehow managed to make a yin and yang sort of pattern. I guess that could be taken as symbolic. But regardless, that experience made me so scared that even just hearing thunder puts me on edge. Whenever there's a lightning or thunderstorm, I always end up doing whatever I can to try and distract myself, whether it be tuning out on the computer or crawling onto the couch with a blanket and a cuddle pillow to watch something. And thus, we have finally reached the last two fears, clowns and porcelain dolls. The reason I save these two for last is because I sincerely have no idea why I'm scared of them. Not a single clue. It's especially weird because I used to have a porcelain marionette doll as a kid that had a music box inside it, and I loved that thing. I mean, I probably still would if we had it. But clowns, and I mean fully decked out makeup and costume type clowns, are just a big fat no thank you to me. Same with the porcelain dolls. An old friend of mine had a room in her house where her parents just had shelves full of porcelain dolls in it. And I mean it when I say I would rather jump out of a second story window than have to spend a single night in that room. I will say though, I'm not afraid of all clowns. There's one that goes to a lot of the events at this park nearby me, and Woody doesn't scare me at all. Hell, I was his assistant one year making balloon animals for the kids. And I was pretty good about doing so myself. But that's because all Woody really does to dress up is a little red paint on his cheeks and a droopy bow tie. I've literally made a point to keep at least two meters between me and fully dressed up clowns in real life though. And I mean that. I'm not even joking, I am not exaggerating in the slightest. It has to be at least two meters, or I am viable to go into a state of panic. 
But I really have no idea where these fears came from, especially because I have no problem with most variations of these things. I'm totally fine with harlequins, jesters, marionettes, and even certain porcelain puppets. But something about a true-to-definition clown and a curly-haired little porcelain doll gives me goosebumps. Of course, these aren't all my fears, just the ones I figured would be most interesting for you guys to hear about. What are some of the weirder fears you guys have? Do you share any of mine? Comment below with your stories, and I hope you all have a happy Halloween. As for me, it's time for trick-or-treating. Bye!